All right. So God is my strength and my shield. When things don't go my way, like how the tornado came in Chennai, when things don't go my way, I still know that God is in control, you know, and he will not allow anything to happen to me that is beyond his control. When the disciples were in the boat, they cried out because they thought they were going to sink. And Jesus came walking on the water and the waves were too high, the wind was too strong, but everything was under the feet of Jesus. Nothing could drown Jesus. That's the power of Jesus. So that's what I believe. But even when we are in a deep soup, God is above the storms. You will not keep my lamp burning. You have turned darkness to light. Set my feet high in the mountain. My enemies to fly so high. I will praise you as long as I live And I I will praise you again and again One, two, two When I walk to the valley I will not fear You are my strength and my shield Everything around me is overtaken I know I'll never be shaken no. Never be shaken, no, never be shaken, no, never be shaken, no, never be shaken. You will, Lord, keep my lamp burning. You have turned darkness to light. Set my feet high on this mountain. Put my enemies to flight so I. I will praise you as long as I live And I I will praise you again and again One, two, two When I walk to the valley I will not fear You are my strength and my shield Everything around me is overtaken I know I'll never be shaken Never be shaken, no Never be shaken, no Never be shaken, no Never be shaken Alright, so God does not want us to be shaken Those who are afraid are the ones who shake, right? So we believe that our God is stronger Right? That's why we don't have to shake. So, let's sing this one. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. You know the song? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's okay. That's great. Yes. The first miracle that Jesus did was turn water into wine. Our God is greater, our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer, awesome and power Our God, our God What if you turn the to wine? Open the eyes of the blind No one like you To the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise No one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome and power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, 
awesome in power, oh God, oh God. And if I got his spirit, then we could ever stop us. And if I got his spirit, then what could stand against? And if I got his spirit, then who could ever stop us? And if I got his spirit, then what could stand against? Greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, I got, I got. Let's pray. If God is for us, then who can be against us? The word of God declares that the God who has turned water to wine, who walks on stormy seas, who calms the raging winds, God who created things into existence from nothing. He spoke those things into existence, the Bible says. That's the God who is with us. He can command the wind and the waves to be still and they obey him. God, the God whom we are serving is the great God, the Almighty, the Adonai, one who is worthy of all our worship. As we come to you, help us to understand that nothing happens in our life without your knowledge, without your permission. And if you want us to go through something, it's because you have a purpose for each one of us. Help us, O oh Lord, as we go through these times of trials, bad weather, sickness, exams, to know that God is still on the throne and he is in control. Help us to trust your word and to obey you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Acts, Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 13. 1 to 13. Okay. I'll put it in the chat box. Acts, no, can I first? 1 to 13. Yes, Vivian, you can start off when you're ready. Okay. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 13. Vivian, take it out. Shoot. Okay. Not literally. When the day the pen, Pentecost. Pentecost arrived, they were all together in, in the place. In one place. Okay. Two. Joanne. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were no, sitting. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you, John. Yes. Three. Uh, Johnny. Johnny is getting the Bible. Hello, Johnny. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Am I stuck? I am. I don't know who's stuck. Hello, Johnny, can you hear me? You're not stuck. Okay. I think Johnny I'm is stuck. Okay. Okay, Abram, you can continue. Okay. Three. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire, which spread out and touched every person there. Okay. okay, since Johnny is not there, four, and Vivian is not there, so let's pass it on to Joanne. And they were all upon, uh, no, no, sorry. And yeah. they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. Right. As the Spirit gave them utterance. 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 Okay. All right. Next person is 
Um, I think Johnny is not back, right? Johnny, hello, can you hear me? Vivian, are you back? No, both of them are not back. Okay, Abram, four. They were Jews. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious men who had come from every country in the world. Six, Joanne. And when this sound occurred, the multi uh, multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Correct. Okay, next person is... Oh, they are not back, I think. So, Abram, continue. Uh, in amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, these people who are talking like this are all... Are Galileans. Correct. Okay, Joanne. And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Okay, Michelle has joined us. Let me just give the passage to her. Michelle, we are in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. And Vivian is also back. Okay. Yes. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. They've just finished verse 8, right, Joanne? Yes, Joanne? Eight. 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 Vivian, Vivian, verse 9. Yes, I mean, I have to read verse 9. Verse 9, yeah. Minute, okay. Nine. Hello, uh, Manoj Akul. Johnny, you're back. Welcome back. Okay. Hello. Oh, yes, I can hear you. Yes, uh, Vivian, verse 9. Parthians and Medes and Limits and the seeds of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, Ju Mesopotamia, Judy, and Judea, Cappadocia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and East. Correct. Okay. Uh, so, Michelle, you are reading verse 10. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Yeah. Okay. Johnny, 11. Okay. So, Cretans and Ara Arabs, uh, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Right. Okay, Abraham, verse uh, 12. 12. Yeah. Okay. Amazed and confused, they kept, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? Correct. 13. Uh, uh, Joanne. Other smoking said, they are full of new wine. <clears throat> They're full of new wine. All right. Thank you guys for reading that. Right. So here it is that we understand about the first coming of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God himself. Then uh, why is it that uh, he is not mentioned much in the Old Testament? He is mentioned in the Old Testament but not as frequently as the New Testament, because this Acts chapter 2 tells us about his coming. So we understand that after his coming, there is a lot of mention about the Holy Spirit. Okay, But till then, there is no mention much about the Holy Spirit, because his role was always behind the scenes. Okay, You see that in Genesis chapter 1 uh, and verse 2 is where he is mentioned for the first time. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God 
was hovering over the face of the waters. Okay, Spirit of God is how Genesis talks about the Holy Spirit. Okay, so uh, when when you see the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, we see that the Holy Spirit used to come upon people, give them some special ability, and then after the job is finished, the Holy Spirit would leave that person. Okay, so the Holy Spirit would come on a person, give a person a special ability, and then the Holy Spirit would leave that person. So this was happening in the Old Testament. Why? Does the Holy Spirit uh, not come inside a person? The reason is because we are not holy. You know, we are not clean people. We are sinful people. So because of that, the Holy Spirit, because He is holy, cannot live inside of unholy people. So there is a problem here, right? So that because we are unholy, Holy Spirit cannot come and live inside of us. So what happened at Pentecost? At Pentecost... Jesus had already cleansed his disciples. Because they believed in Jesus, they were now cleansed. They were all cleaned. So they didn't have any, in the sense, they, have, they are sinful people. They are like normal people like us. But their sins were forgiven. So now they were clean people. So because of that, the Holy Spirit could come and live inside their hearts. Okay. So that's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Was it planned? Yes, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I will send you the Holy Spirit when I go up to the Father in heaven. So when Jesus went up to heaven, then he requested the Father to send the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, down to us. Now, Jesus says, this Spirit will now be with you. So Jesus has left. So in Jesus' place, now the Holy Spirit is with us. Plus... The Spirit will now live inside of you. To anyone who believes in Jesus, the Spirit of God will now live inside their hearts. Okay, So that is the advantage of the Holy Spirit coming. So it happened because Jesus died on the cross, he rose up from the grave, and then he went up to heaven. It happened because he, he wanted it to happen like that. He asked the Father, and the Father sent us the Holy Spirit. Let's see how he came. Okay, That's what this passage describes, how he came. When the day of Pentecost arrived, okay, Pentecost means 50th, 50th, Ambadamatta Dosam. Okay, it is the 50th day after the Passover. Okay, 50 days have passed after the festival of the Passover. So that is when the day of Pentecost comes. So it says here that they were all together in one place. Where were they? They were in the upper room. It is said in um, chapter 1 verse 15, sorry, 1 verse um, 14, right? Uh, all these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women, Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. So where were they? They were all in the upper room. Okay, Upper room of this place called Mark's house. Mark was a man, was a young boy. His mother's name was Mary. They were meeting in the upper room of that building. Okay, so the the day of Pentecost, that is fiftieth day from the Passover, all these people, disciples of Jesus, including the ladies, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers, all of them were gathered in the uh, upper room. Okay, they were praying, and then what happened? Suddenly, there came from heaven. A sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Okay, so how how is the sound of mighty rushing wind? I think if you ask the people in Chennai, they would tell you what is the sound of mighty rushing wind, right? It's something like you know you blow into the microphone and you get kind of heavy wind sound. Okay, but people were not flying around. Why? Because it was only the sound. It was not really windy. It was only the sound of the wind. Okay. So mighty rushing sound of a wind came and filled the entire house where they were sitting. Second thing that happened was a divided tongues as a fire. See, imagine like a candle fire okay, appeared on each of their heads, on each, rested on each of them. So this fire was burning on top of each person. Now, it's not really fire. It it's is not like fire. 
Pardon me? It was only like fire. Like fire, correct. It was something like fire that, uh, you know, divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Third thing that happened was they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. So, the Spirit of God gave them the ability to speak in other languages. Wow. Now, that is amazing, right? I know four languages. I can speak Hindi, Tamil, English and Malayalam. That's four languages. Because I have studied these languages. I have uh, trained myself to understand and speak and write these languages. But these men... They were unschooled people. Most of them were even uh, fishermen. You know, they don't go to school at that time. So, they are unschooled fishermen and they don't know any other language other than Greek and Hebrew. And here, they are speaking in other languages. Maybe Arabic, maybe some kind of English, maybe, you know, uh, Indian language, Hindi or something like that. Whatever is the language. They were speaking other languages spoken by people from other parts of the world. Okay, so why was that important? Why are these three signs very important? One, the word spirit in Hebrew is actually wind. Okay, the word spirit in actual Hebrew language, the word is the same word used for wind. So when you ask, you know, who came? The spirit came, which means he is the wind. So, the mighty rushing wind and the spirit are one and the same okay, in their language. So, it is a sign that the Holy Spirit had come because his name itself is wind. Secondly, tongues of fire. See, what is fire? Fire actually means cleansing or fire of passion. Like somebody is burning with the desire. right? So, if you look at the Old Testament, you will see that the fire of God was burning on top of the mountain, see, where Moses went up to meet him on the Mount Sinai. See, that is where God gave him the Ten Commandments, the law, right? So, God is a God who dwells in, uh, you know, in unapproachable light. So, fire also denotes cleansing. Fire also denotes light. So, in all ways, fire is something that you know God connects to so tongues of fire that appeared on each person was like a sign that said that the Holy Spirit has come now so there were these three signs a sound that sounded like the mighty rushing wind second the tongue of fire that was on top of each person and then thirdly is the different languages that they spoke so all three signs showed one truth and what is that Holy Spirit has come. Okay, Holy Spirit has come. Now, to whom was this a sign? Let's see the next part. Verse 5. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together. Okay. <laughs> Just Johnny getting excited. No problem, Johnny. All right. So, uh, here is uh, people from all over the world who were Jews they had come to Jerusalem for the Passover. So there were Jews uh, you know, who were living in Rome. There were Jews who were living in uh, Greece. There were Jews who were living in um, India. There were Jews who were living in Syria. All those places. So those people, even though they are living in a different country and they are working there, they all at heart are Jews. So for them, it is a compulsory thing that during Passover, they have to come to Jerusalem. It's a law from the Old Testament, you see, God has commanded that no matter where you go, you got to come back home to Jerusalem for the Passover. So these people are very obedient Jews. So they came all the way traveling from Syria, from Rome, uh, from India, from Greece, wherever they were in. They just took a ship or some of them traveled by foot. They, they start early because they have to start months before in order to reach Jerusalem and they reached Jerusalem. But the problem is, they have been living in this foreign country for a long time. They know that language also. See, they know the Jewish language and they know Greek and they know that language. Or whichever la land they are living in, most of them know la that language also. They know Arabic, they know Syrian, whichever language they have to use for you know living in that country, 
they learned that language also. So these men basically were speaking that language and they heard the apostles and the followers of Jesus speaking in that language. See, these men who were not schooled, who had not gone to learn any language from school, these men were speaking in their language, the country that they had come from. And that was a miracle, you see. So what did they say? What were they speaking? Um, and uh, men from every nation under heaven, at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in their own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. That is what the apostles were saying. They were saying the mighty deeds that God has done. What all God has God has sent his son among us and he did all these things. He died on the cross and he rose up from the grave. The mighty deeds of God. That is what these men were saying. In which language? In the language that these people can understand. Their native language. There was a collection of people from different parts like Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamians, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egyptians, Arabians, everywhere. Jews from all these places came down. And they were surprised that these men knew their language. And they were speaking about the mighty acts of God in their language. How did it help? It helped them to understand what these men were saying. See, So God was here communicating with these people. He wanted them to know that the God of the Jews is now Jesus. He has come down as Jesus. He has come down as a human being. And these people are all witness to that. If they have to hear this gospel, they have to be attracted towards the di disciples. For that, God got their attention by speaking their language. See, now many times, you know, people say that uh, God uh, is uh, God doesn't want to communicate. No, that's a lie. Bible has been given to us so that just to show that God wants to communicate with us. Today we have the written Bible. In those days, only the Old Testament was written, but the New Testament was about to be written, you see. Both the Old and the New Testament tells us that God wants to communicate with us. He's not a God who remains silent. He's a God who wants us to know Him. He is a God who wants to have relationship with us. And that is why He speaks to us. And He speaks to us in a way that we can understand, right? Because if He speaks in a language that I don't understand, I'd be looking at the Bible and I'd say, I don't understand. If the Bible was in Greek only, you know, uh, I would say, I don't understand anything for, uh, about Greek, so Bible doesn't make sense to me. If I, if I knew that the Bible was only in Hebrew language, I don't know Hebrew, so I would say, Bible doesn't make sense to me. But since the Bible is in English, and the Bible is in Malayalam, and I can read it, I can understand it. And I know that this is how God communicates to me. Okay, So, people who went before us took the pain to translate the Bible into the language that you are comfortable with so that you would read the Bible and understand. Put your faith in this Jesus Christ. That is the purpose for which the Bible has been translated into a language. There are many, many languages into which the Bible has not yet been translated. Work is going on, but it's very hard, very strenuous, very painful, but people are still doing it. So, so we have to pray for those people who are still translating the Bible into different languages, right? There are some parts in India which doesn't have a translation of the Bible. There are, I think, almost 14 languages in India still doesn't have the Bible in their language. So uh, last year work has started on four of them and the work is still going on. So there still is more than 10 languages, main languages, where the Bible is still not being read. So there are many people who speak that language who don't know who Jesus is who don't know whom God has sent to save them. So it's very, very important that we help in translating the Bible into all these languages so that people would know this God and they would receive him as their savior. Finally, <clears throat> and all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled 
with new wine see whenever god makes a revelation whenever god tries to communicate through people others listen to this and they have two opinions one is they would support it they would say yes i think this is god saying but what is he trying to say the other group of people is who think that it is all a lie okay like we said this two truths and one lie some people think oh these guys are drunk these guys are crazy these guys are fools you know different opinions can come some would be positive some would be negative these are even they call jesus a crazy man you know because jesus said uh, about uh, his kingdom and they said you're a crazy man you know you're not a person uh, you got a demon inside you they said see so uh, Je- they call jesus a demon possessed man and a crazy man some people believe jesus words some people hated jesus because of his words same thing happens to us also when we speak god's truth some people will love us some people will hate us these are two reactions i'll go but definitely there'll be a reaction okay there'll be a response from people either you will love the person who reveals god's word to you or you will hate the word of god that is revealed right so here were these people they did not know this was going to happen okay this happened without them expecting it mighty rushing wind sound tongues of fire on top of each person and finally the holy spirit giving them utterance of new language so when they spoke about the mighty acts of god in the language that the holy spirit gave them people around them understood them they were confused they were amazed but they said what is god trying to communicate one group said like that another group said these guys are drunk early in the morning okay <laughs> they just drank more wine and they have lost their sense so this is how the two responses from the crowd came right so now the holy spirit has come let's see what the holy spirit is going to do through these disciples next week all right so let's pray heavenly father we want to thank you because the holy spirit who is god has already come and he is among us and he is the one who is going to help us in our christian journey he is the one who is going to live inside of our hearts he is the one who is going to be with us 24/7 just like how jesus was with his disciples 24/7 he is going to live with us every day every day of the year all the years till the end of my life the holy spirit is going to be with me help me to listen to his communication and to speak what he wants me to speak help me to obey everything that he commands me from the word of god to believe it and to obey it sometimes people can confuse us for being mad or crazy or even sometimes being drunk help us o oh lord not to give ear to that but to keep on speaking the truth till they believe we commit each of us into your hands in jesus name we pray amen